Good morning, everyone. It is so good to have you back in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen, right? <laughs> Sometimes we just don't realize how good we have it that we can come here and meet together. Also, for all of you online, we are very happy to have you tuned in. Please join us as we worship this morning. I invite everyone to stand and get those hands ready to clap this morning. You all remember this one, don't you? <laughs> Here nor, a little bit. Nor did you notice how many smiles were out there today? Everybody is just so glad to be here. The, 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 that inner that inner feeling is just busting out with all those smiles. There's lots of D's out there. <laughs> yes, we want to be smiling. We are happy to be here today. Um, I know Pastor Kevin has a great message in store for us this morning. And uh, this is a song, an old third day song. I just, I really like the words to it, King of Glory. So I just hope you all just leave everything at the door, come in here, worship, just think about your Father, worship our Lord, and let's just enjoy this time this morning.
I'll tell you, I'm new at this electric guitar stuff, and I'm really out of my comfort zone, so if I hit a wrong chord every now and then, please show me a little grace. I'm trying my yeah. best. When she hits the wrong chord, <laughs> that's know. to cover my mistakes. <laughs> no, not at all. Thank you, Steve, for being so kind. And uh, we are looking for some instrumentalists and some singers out there, so please reach out if you have it on your heart to, um, to help with worship, because we... We love it. We enjoy it very much, and, and we'd love to have some people join us. So I just want to throw that in there a little bit. Okay, we're going to go and continue worship this morning singing about the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so close. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness. Well, may be seated this morning. Well, thank you, worship team, for leading us through those songs. And worship is so much more than a song. We bring so much more than a song when we enter into this space. And we get to commune with God because he loves us that much. So... As we continue with our worship, we're going to pray. And I'm going to lead us in a, in a communal prayer, but I don't know what's on your hearts. But there is somebody who does. And he's up there. And he's listening. So while I'm praying here, I want you guys to be praying in your seats. 
And guess what? Prayer doesn't have an age, so kids, you better be praying too and lifting them up, right? All right. Well, God, we are just so thankful. Thankful for the sunshine, thankful for the rain, thankful for the blue skies. Thankful for rainbows, because that is a sign of your covenant with us. Just one of the many covenants that you have made. And like the song that we sang this morning, God, you are so faithful. And your goodness is running after each and every one of us. Lord, I must confess, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve your constant pursuit. I don't deserve your love. I don't deserve a lot of things. And yet that doesn't stop you. So Lord, I'm thankful that you are a God constantly pursuing me, constantly pursuing us, constantly pursuing your people, your creation, because you love us. So Lord, we're in this place today worshiping you, our Father, our perfect and loving Father. So Lord, thank you. And we just want to say we love you. And we just want you to know that there are some things on our hearts, there are some things on our minds that we are constantly thinking about and overthinking about. So Lord, we, we lay them down to you today. We give them to you, the ultimate healer, redeemer, restorer, renewer. Lord, I pray for the Holy Spirit to enter into this place, but not this building. Lord, we ask that the Holy Spirit enter into the places in our hearts. Lord, fill us with your spirit. Convict us. Bring to light things that should never be in the darkness. Lord, thank you for Pastor Kevin and Pastor Steve and the leadership that they provide for our church. It is a hard job. We are grateful for them. So Lord, I pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit onto Pastor Kevin as he comes up here and he leads us in a message, in your words. Lord, I pray for boldness and courage to say the hard things. Lord, you are so good. All of our days, you have been good. You have been faithful. Even when we don't deserve it, even if we don't deserve it, you are good. And so we come shouting praises, worshiping you, with our whole hearts, our whole minds, our whole souls, and all of our strength, we give it to you this day. Lord, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, we do have some announcements today. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it or heard it, but if this is the first time, Next week, if you get here at 9.30, you're going to be late. I'm just going to tell you right up, you're going to be late. And if you come inside to the sanctuary, you're definitely going to miss out <laughs> on the worship service. Um, so 9 a.m., repeat after me, 9 a.m. Awesome, I'm glad you guys are all listening. 9 a.m. outside. Where are we going to be? Outside. outside. All right. 9 a.m., worship starts outside. If you have a lawn chair, 
great, bring it. If not, we have a wonderfully hard metal chair for you to fold open and sit on for the duration of the service. <laughs> I'm glad you guys laughed, all right. Um, all right, 9 a.m. outside is the first service, which means our second service is going to be 1030, and it's going to be where? Inside. Oh, my goodness. You guys are following. You're tracking what I'm laying down. I love it. Um, just to reiterate, if you do have children, the outside service, there will not be any children's services for them. So they won't be able to go downstairs and have arts and crafts. And I talked to Miss Debbie. She has a turtle today. I don't know what that's about, but I'm really excited to find out what she, why she has a turtle. So if you see Miss Debbie, definitely ask why she has a turtle. All right. Um, and if you are watching online, the only online service that will be available will be the 1030 service, all right? We don't want to forget our brothers and sisters who are also worshiping with us online. So if you have it on your heart, reach out to them, text them, call them, get in touch with them. They are still a part of our church too, right? All right. Um, well, probably my favorite week is coming up. And it's called VBS Week. And so I'm going to invite my friend, Miss Joy, to come up. Um, and while she's coming up, can we give her a round of applause? Because let's be honest, to provide VBS Week is a monster. And she needs a lot of help. And so um, she needs a lot of grace, but a lot of love, a lot of prayers. And we are just so thankful for you. But Jesus powers us through. Oh, my goodness. Awesome, so I'm going to turn it over. I think we have a little tidbit to show you up here of where we're going. Are you ready for the most epic adventure ever? Next summer, Group VBS is taking kids on a ride they'll never forget. Get on board the Rocky Railway. Your church will be on track at Sing and Play Express. Get ready for high-energy fun at Locomotion Games. Experience impactful Bible lessons and Bible adventures. You'll have amazing discoveries at Imagination Station. Take a glimpse into the world of five awesome kids who learned that Jesus' power pulls us through. The best part of summer is full steam ahead at Rocky Railway. All right, so who's excited for VBS? Yay! All right, we need all of you all to participate in VBS. And somebody may say, I'm too old. No, you're not. We need all of you for VBS. We are putting this on for our kids and our church and in our community. And we need you to invite them, bring those kids. Um, we want to reach out and share the love of Jesus with them. We want to see how God is at work in our community. And, of course, see that Jesus' power pulls us through which is what our theme is for VBS. But we also want to come together and really build our faith together as the adults, as we love on each other, as we put together aspen trees to show the Rocky Railway, as we put together a, a, a locomotive with um, our, our friends who are putting together the, the decorations. Um, as you pray for VBS, Everybody has a role, and I hope that you all will look for how you can be part of it. Definitely need some uh, crew leaders to be the conductors and, and conduct groups of kids around. 
We need help with decorations. Um, mark your calendars for August 7th. We're going to come and transform the sanctuary and the whole church into the Rocky Railway. We need lots of help for that. Um, we need help with people to lead our games and to um, help with games and different things that we're doing throughout the church. So there is a role for everyone. And I hope that you will um, look at the little sheet that you've got and see how you can help. And like I said, even, even if you're not sure that you're ready for um, a whole bunch of kids, you can be praying for us. So we, we need those prayers. We need everyone to come together. And it's a great chance. If you feel disconnected from the church, it's been a long year, y'all. This is the chance to come and get to know somebody as, you know, decorations might not seem like something that's a big deal, but if you're working beside someone, you get to know them and you get to share your story with G of Jesus' work in you. And so um, it's a great time for us as a whole church to come together. So I hope that you'll be part of it. Anyway, and if you have any questions, see me out there. <laughs> All right, thank you, Joy. I'm excited for BBS. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. It's gonna be good. All right. Well, at this time, we're gonna go ahead and dismiss our children, pre-K through the fourth grade, so they can make their way back. I see Miss Deb and Miss Deanna that are going back uh, to be with our kids today. We're thankful for our teachers. We're thankful for our our kids and uh, a, a turtle today, apparently. So <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So, um, and just a reminder for, for our parents, for uh, next Sunday, it's uh, what we call Family Sunday, and so uh, we'll only have um, something available for the real younger kids um, for, for service next week, but we, we love to include uh, some of our older kids who can, who can be in here as well to, to join us. So just kind of a heads up for next week. All right, so uh, today I'm excited to be able to introduce to you uh, several new church members uh, that are, uh, are agreeing to our church and are coming and, and have been a part, but now officially making it a part. And so I want to invite Emily and Keith and Renee to come on up, and you guys can come up and just, yeah, come on up right now. Don't be shy. And you guys can come up and just stand right up here so everyone can see you. I promise I'm not going to make you say anything, okay? You don't, don't have, no pressure on you today. But I just want everyone to be able to, to see you. So I want to start, I want to by introducing to you Emily Shupp, and we're excited um, to have her. So we, you might have recognized her because just a few weeks ago, she graduated from Smithsburg High School. And so um, she's, uh, yeah, but now here she is, a member of our church. Emily is an awesome, awesome person. She, she has the biggest heart. And I, if you have not met her, I encourage you to, to go meet her. But she is, uh, has been attending our, our youth group, too, the, pretty much since I started. So it's been, we've been on the same journey together, and uh, she's now a, a leader in our, in our youth group. And so it's, it's been awesome to see her grow and blossom. And then um, I have two other people up here, and there's a lot that I can say about them. <laughs> If you don't know who these people are, they happen to be my mom and dad, and so uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool, um, their, their story. They, they did not uh, grow up in the Nazarene church, but have found their way uh, to the Nazarene church, and uh, a couple years ago, uh, while they were living in Colorado, uh, they ended up attending a, a Nazarene church and got in and, and served and became official members, so we're, we're just transferring their membership uh, to, to our church because they have moved. A lot of you know this, but they are now living in West Virginia. And so uh, they, I don't know, they wanted to be around some grandbabies or something. I, I don't understand that, but <laughs> they came out, and so we're just so glad to have them. We also have one other that is uh, going to be a new member, and uh, she's not here, but we have a picture of her, and her name is Caroline Ogachi, and her and her husband James and her three children are now visiting her family in Kenya, and what's cool is that they're actually watching the live stream right now from Kenya. How cool is that? So, yes. So this is, 
This is a picture of Caroline, and uh, in December, she actually received her bachelor's degree from the University of Maryland Global Campus in computer security. And so that's a, that's a pretty awesome thing, a bright young, young lady who uh, uh, we're just so delighted to have her and have um, these awesome people join our family. So let's, uh, let's give a big old welcome to our new members. You guys can have a seat. Yep. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, as they make their way back to their seats, uh, let's uh, go ahead and dive into our scripture for today. And so if you have your Bibles with you, um, or if you have them on your phone, if you want to pull those out, and uh, we're going to be in Mark chapter 5, uh, beginning in verses uh, 21 through 43. So if you, uh, if you would are able and willing to, to stand for the reading of the word today, I invite you to stand now as you turn. Again, it's Mark chapter 5, 21 through 43. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying, please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I could just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and he asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, Don't be afraid. Just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to him, or said to her, Talitha, come, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this, and he told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of the Lord, and you may have a seat. Well, there is a lot to unpack in this. And it's it's a beautiful, beautiful passage and and one of of great power. And it's a continuation, um, and, and and we need to look into... Uh, the context of what is happening in, in this uh, passage. And so we were reminded of last week, if you were here last week, Pastor Steve talked about the, um, 
that Jesus calmed the storm, right? And so they're out on the boat, and all of a sudden the storm came up, and Jesus stilled the storm and calmed the waters, right? Peace be still. And so this, that story showed that Jesus had power over nature, right? And then we continue into chapter 5 of Mark, and it says that Jesus restored a demon-possessed man. And so that's, a, that's an amazing, amazing, powerful story. And I, I encourage you to, to go read that. But he cast these legion of demons from this guy into a herd of pigs. And it's just a, a really crazy, powerful story. So it shows that Jesus even has power over demons and evil. And then in our passage, of course, we have two stories here. And we have one where it shows that Jesus has power over sickness and disease. And he has power over death itself. This is the Jesus that we worship. This is the Jesus that we proclaim and we sing to and why we're here today. This is his power. And so we come to our uh, section in, in verses 21, and it says that Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake. And so um, Jesus and his disciples, they had been uh, traveling a lot. They've been putting a lot of miles in on their vehicle, a.k.a. their boat. And uh, so they keep going back and forth on uh, the Sea of Galilee, uh, this lake, the sea. Um, and so we see, um, obviously, going back to last week, they were on the water and the storm came down right in the middle of it. And so you can imagine that um, as they're on this water and they're going back now, they, it's got to be in their back of their minds. Like, do you remember last time we were on this sea? Do you remember what happened? We were terrified. We thought we were going to die. I wonder what's going to happen this time. <laughs> they were probably a little hesitant to get on the boat, right? Um, but they, they get on and they're going. And um, what's interesting about um, the geographical area of this is that uh, one side was a Jewish side, and the other side of the sea was actually um, the Gentiles, okay? So non-Jewish people. And so the one who was uh, the possessed by a demon was on the, on the Gentile side. But here in our passage, they're actually coming back over to the Jewish side of the region, okay? And so we see that Jesus obviously had been performing these miracles. Word about him is spreading through the region, and people are gathering. And so they're coming across the lake. And I can imagine that some people are spotting and say, look, he's coming back again. That Jesus, he's coming. And so people are just flocking to the shore's edge as they're pulling up. And so Jesus steps out of the boat and is greeted by a lot of people who want his attention, want his healing touch in their lives, including this man, this synagogue leader named Jairus. Okay? And what's interesting about a synagogue leader is this is a leader who is someone who everyone would have known, okay? Um, he was the one in charge of all the worship gatherings, and it's, it was their church, their place where they worshiped. And so he was in charge of the scroll and taking care of it and providing uh, the structure and the leadership uh, to what happens in the worship service. And so he was a prominent leader. He was someone that was known, okay? And here he is, and what we see is that when he sees Jesus, he immediately just falls down at Jesus' feet. Okay? And he's obviously in this desperate place because it, for those of you who are parents here, you could understand this. He's at end's wit because his daughter is about to die. She's sick and, and she is dying. And Jairus, he, he's not like those other Pharisees. He's not like the other leaders in that he's coming and he's just, instead of trying to accuse Jesus, he's, he's surrendering to him. He's saying, Jesus, I believe you have the power to heal my daughter. And so he falls at Jesus' feet, and he pleads with her. He said, please come. Please come to my house. Please, if you would just lay your hands on her, she will be healed. I just know it. Just please, please, please come with me. And so what, what happens? Verse 24. So Jesus went with him. And a large crowd followed him as he was going and pressed in. And I, I don't know about you. Have you ever been in a crowd of people? And you're, and you're walking, probably not recently, right, because of social distancing, right? That's kind of far a distance from us. 
but they're in this crowd and they're moving. Maybe, you know, we can think of traffic, right? We're moving slow, right? But we're going, going one place here. And so this crowd of people is just coming in and everybody wants a piece of Jesus. Everybody wants to come in and, and touch him. Everyone wants to come talk to him. They want healings. They want to see what he's going to say next and, and what he's going to do next. And so here he is and this crowd is following him. And all of a sudden, our story is interrupted. A new character comes in, and she doesn't have a name. We don't have a name. It just says that a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Can you imagine that? Someone who is suffering for 12 whole years. And it goes on to say more about her, that she had suffered a great deal under the care of of many doctors. So she's going around looking for second, third, fourth, fifth opinions of all kinds of doctors and saying, I am sick and I need, I need help. Can you prescribe something? Can you help me? I, this has got to stop. I cannot do this anymore. And she had spent everything that she had. So she's poor. She's broke. She has nothing left. She's, imagine if you try to put yourself in this situation, she's desperate. And not only that, but in that culture, she was treated just like someone who was a leper, someone who was sick, who was diseased. They were treated as an outcast. They could not be around people. And if they did come around people, they had to yell out, unclean, unclean, and people would flee because it was believed that if they would touch people, that it would somehow transmit to the others. So they did not go around them. You know, everything that she sat on uh, to the bed she laid on, everything was unclean. And whoever touched that would be unclean as well. And so she was outcasted. And the synagogue leader, right, she was not allowed there. She would have not been allowed in there. By Jairus would not have let her in because of her being unclean. So imagine being isolated from people. We were isolated from people for a good half of the year to a year, right, some of us? Imagine 12 years of that, being secluded, being treated like nothing, like some kind of monster, just alone, outcast, This is what's happening here. But when she had heard that Jesus was coming, she came up behind him in the crowd because, again, she was not supposed to be there, right? So she's trying to come in where nobody would see her, that she could come in, but she believed because she had nothing else. It was Jesus or nothing. The doctors couldn't help. And she came in, she snuck in, and she reaches out, and she touches Jesus' cloak, Because she just thought that if I could just touch his cloak, like not even touch him, I don't even have to talk with him, but if I could just touch his cloak, I know that I'll be healed. She had unbelievable faith. And it says that immediately. This is a word that uh, Mark uses in in his gospel 27 times. And it says immediately her bleeding stopped. It just stopped. After 12 years of constant, it just stopped. And then... She felt in her body that she was freed from healing. She was set free in that moment. And at the same time, we have Jesus, who then is walking, is probably talking, you know, with, with Jairus. And, you know, Jairus is like, come on, let's pick up the pace. Let's go, right? Let's go. We, my daughter's dying. We need to get there before she dies. Help us out here. Come on, let's go. And all of a sudden, Jesus kind of stops because he realized that power had gone out from him. And so he turns around and he asks this question, who touched my clothes? Which the disciples around him were like, that's a silly question. Everybody is touching you. Everybody is bumping your arm. Everybody's reaching out. Everybody's trying to get your attention. He's a celebrity. He's, they're trying to, everybody's touching you. What do you mean who touched you? I touched you. She touched you. He touched you, right? Everybody touched you. But he ignored that. <laughs> And he kept looking around, and he's, I can imagine him just kind of glancing over at who's there at the, at the crowd, just looking in a slow turn. And here is this woman, knowing what had happened, knowing that he was referring to her because she now was not bleeding. She was set free. She came and fell at Jesus' feet because she was caught, Right? It went from like, oh, I'm healed. Oh, I'm going to sneak out the back door so nobody can see, and I'll get back to my life. But all of a sudden, who touched my clothes? And it caught her. She's like, oh, no. 
And here comes Jesus' eyes. Boom. She comes and she just lays out and she begins to tell what had happened. Jesus, I'm so sorry. It was me. I touched you. I needed you. I had nowhere else to go. I've been going to all these doctors. I've, I, I've been bleeding for 12 years. I've been an outcast. I know I shouldn't be here. I'm so sorry that I did this, but I just thought if you could just, if I could just touch your cloak that I would be healed. And I'm healed. <laughs> I'm healed. I'm not bleeding. This is happening, right? And <laughs> And before, so here's what Jesus said to her, which this is a beautiful, beautiful thing. He said to her, this woman who has no name, who has no identity, who is not welcomed, is now called daughter. Jesus calls this woman daughter. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. I mean, wow, can you sense this? This is powerful stuff here. By calling her daughter, she, she now has been healed. That's a, wow, she is part of me. She's part of our family. This is a family. This is somebody who's known now. I'm no longer an outcast. I am known. But then think about it now on the other side of things with, with Jairus, right? Here's Jairus. He's in desperate need, too, in a situation. He's trying to get Jesus to his house as fast as he can because he believes that Jesus has to be there before she passes away. I got to get Jesus there to touch her, and I know, I know she'll be healed. So he's, like, in this desperate, like, hey, let's go. Let's keep going. And all of a sudden, Jesus stops and is talking to a lady that he would not even let in to his synagogue. You, you see what's happening here? And he's saying, why are we stopping? We need to keep going. He would have probably been irritated at that. I know I would have been, right, in that moment. It's like, no, we got to go. We don't have time to stop. And then all of a sudden, he performs this miracle. This power has gone out of Jesus. He's thinking this power that Jesus has, this miracle that's been performed, was meant for his daughter. He thinks, oh, Jesus has, Jesus has taken my miracle, <laughs> And at the same time, while Jesus is still speaking, here comes people from his house running to him just with, down, I'm sure, downcast faces just saying, I'm so sorry, buddy, but your daughter has died. Don't waste this, time's, this, this guy's time anymore. Don't bother him anymore. I'm so sorry. Because for them, resurrection wasn't on their mind. Healing could only happen if there was breath still in the lungs, right? And so, <laughs> overhearing what they were telling to Jairus, Jesus turns to Jairus and he says this, Don't be afraid, just believe. Don't be afraid, just believe. Believe what? My daughter's dead. What are you talking about? Today, maybe, maybe you need to hear these words of Jesus spoken to you. Don't be afraid. Just believe. So then Jesus obviously just kind of, I don't know how he did it. He had this crowd of people following him, but all of a sudden he just, he just keeps, them, keeps them away because he says he did not let anyone follow him except for Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. This was Jesus' inner circle they were, they were allowed to some special things. Jesus was more intimate with these. And so he's letting them come with him and Jairus and those who came to Jairus from his house. And so they're, they're walking. And so they finally get to, to the home of, his, of, of Jairus. And Jesus saw a commotion, right? There's um, people crying and there's people wailing out loud. And uh, at the time, I, I learned something that there are professional mourners, that would literally come in and they would kind of make a scene and, and be loud and, and would cry out. And it, would, it was not in like a, hey, you know, um, a fakeness, a fake mourning, but it was actually more for the community to let people know, hey, this family is grieving. So this is the situation that Jesus is coming into and people are wailing and grieving and they're causing a commotion and family members and, and friends, neighbors are probably all there just crying and wailing, grieving the loss of this little girl. And Jesus comes in and says, why all the commotion and wailing? 
The child is not dead, but asleep. Imagine being told that in that moment, being that family. They laughed at Jesus. They mocked him like, who's this guy? Jesus, what? What are you talking about? She's asleep. You haven't even been here. You, don't, you haven't even seen her. You don't even know her. But she's asleep? No, she's dead. I, I checked the pulse. She's dead. She's gone. She's lost color. But it, then Jesus puts, puts them out, right? He dismisses them, okay? And he takes, uh, he takes the child's father and mother, and the disciples who were there with him, and they went in where the child was, and Jesus took the little dead girl's hand, which that would have made him unclean. (laughs) You weren't allowed to touch a dead body, and here comes Jesus taking her hand. And he says, Talitha Kaum, which was Aramaic, but Mark here was also writing to Gentiles, to others who were not Jewish, who did not speak that language, and so it was translated into Latin. Um, and and uh, what happened uh, was actually, it obviously translated for us, so we could understand, which I'm thankful for. Little girl, I say to you, get up. He's just saying, little girl, it's time. Get up. <laughs> get, get, ready for, get ready for school, right? Time to get up. Alarm clock's going up. Time to get up. And immediately again, Uh, Mark's one of his favorite words. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around, and it said that she's 12 years old. It's interesting that the lady who was healed was struggling for 12 years, and this little girl was 12 years old. Kind of an interesting thing there. And the most, uh, an understatement of the year right here. (laughs) At this, they were completely astonished. Imagine that. A little girl is now alive and is now walking, is breathing again. Jesus had power over death. That's who Jesus is. So three takeaways for us today from this passage. Number one, Jesus always goes with us. Jesus always goes with us. You see, Jairus he came and he pleaded for, for Jesus, please, please come, please come heal my little girl. And Jesus went. See, no matter what situation that we find ourselves in, no matter where you are at, what struggles, what trials, what hardships, what you're going through right now, Jesus promises that he will be there with you in the midst of it. And that is some good news. He cares about what we're going through, right? Uh, He asked that question, "Does, does God really care? Yes, he cares so much about each and every one. He cares about what you're going through. Don't doubt for a moment that he doesn't care. He cares enough that he sent Jesus for us, okay? He cares that much about you. He cares what you're going through, and he promises to help you through, okay? He promises to give you strength. He promises to surround you with other people who will care and who will help provide. He will provide answers. And I'm going to just say that he will not, he may not heal us right on the spot. I don't, that's one thing I don't understand. I don't understand why God will heal some and others he doesn't. I don't, I don't understand that. And so I don't want to promise you that he's going to heal you as you think, right? He didn't heal Jerry's daughter as Jairus thought it was a different way. It was in his timing, right? It wasn't right away. Jesus could have just said, hey, she's, she's well now, just with words, just a snap of his fingers. He could, have, he could have done that. But instead, he chose to just go. And he allowed her to die before he performed that miracle, okay? But God, and here's what I want to encourage all of you, is that God always goes with us. He's always on that journey with us, no matter what we're facing. So that is good news because that means that we're not alone. <laughs> he won't leave us, he won't forsake us, but he's there on our journey with us. Matthew 28, 20 says, Behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. So know that Jesus is going with you today in whatever you're facing. The second thing, second point today. Jesus is there when we reach out to him. Okay, he's there when we reach out to them. 
Just like um, when that woman reached out to Jesus, if I could just touch him, if I could just reach out. She was believing in faith that I'm going to reach out to Jesus and that he's going to heal me. You see, Jesus is not too far from us, okay? He, we are not too far gone from Jesus. That's something that I, as I talk with people, so many people think, you know, I've sinned too much. If you would know my story, if you know what I've done, how broken I am, Jesus doesn't have time for me. <laughs> Jesus won't be there. He doesn't hear. He doesn't care about me. But that's absolutely wrong. You are not too far gone to just reach out to Jesus and let him save your life. Let him impact your life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. So reach out to him. So whatever situation you're in, wherever you find yourself, if you have, you know, you're saying, oh, I haven't reached out to Jesus since I was a little kid. Reach out. It's not too late, friend. If you've never reached out to him, just trust him. Reach out to him and let him prove himself faithful to you because he will not let you down. Never. Third point, last point here. Jesus' power is released when we fall at his feet in faith. You see, both Jairus and the sick woman in our passage, they fall down in desperation to Jesus, right? They were in a place where they had no hope except for Jesus. They had no, nothing else. Everything else was so far gone that they could only fall at Jesus' feet and say, God, I trust you. Both of them fell at his feet, believing in faith, right? Notice their faith in this passage. They didn't say, if you could heal us. They said, we know that you will heal us. That is great, bold faith. And I think sometimes we, we neglect that. We need to declare it, Jesus, I have faith in you today, complete faith. And so, Sometimes we just need to fall on our feet, fall to our knees at Jesus' feet. Because when we go from standing up and when we go from taking it all on our shoulders and doing everything that we want to do, we're relying on ourselves. But when we come to our knees and we lay it down, we're saying, God, I completely trust you and I need you more than the air that I breathe. That's the kind of faith, that's the kind of posture that Jesus is wanting. And so we come and we say, Jesus, I don't know, I don't know how to do this without you. Jesus, I'm sick. Jesus, I need your touch. Jesus, I believe in you because I cannot do it my own way. I'm, I'm running into dead ends and Jesus, I just need you. I need to trust you. Lord, show up to me. You're all that I need. You're all that I want. Jesus, I completely give it to you, Lord. You have my whole life. It's not about me anymore. It's not about my pride. It's me humbling myself before you saying, Jesus, I need you. I am broken and I'm fallen and I'm hopeless without you. And Jesus, I need you. Show up in my life. I think we need to get on our knees today. And remember that it's not about us. Our need comes from Jesus. The power is in Jesus. Nobody has been disappointed. Nobody has been turned away or let down because they surrendered themselves completely on their knees to Jesus. It hasn't happened. So what's your posture today? Are you saying, I got this? I don't need, I don't need God. I'm, you know, it's this situation, it's hopeless. Doctors, they've, they've said there's no hope. So you're going to have this your whole life. Can I just remind you that what's impossible for us as people, that nothing, nothing, let me say it again louder for the people in the back. <laughs> nothing is impossible with Jesus. Nothing is impossible with Jesus. We got to believe and trust in him. So I want to invite the worship team to come back up.
and to lead us in a response time. And I realize that a lot of us are struggling through a lot of things right now. Some really impossible situations. But nothing is impossible for God. Where's your faith? What's your posture? What is God, through his spirit right now, speaking to your heart about? Is it something with your pride? Is it something going on in your life, in a relationship? Someone who's, who's gone astray that you need, to, you need to get on your knees and pray for somebody else. It might not be you. It might be someone else in your life that you come and you say, Jesus, I need you to perform a miracle. I need you to restore in only a way that you can today. Maybe for you, it's, it's coming down and saying, Jesus, I need you. I'm hopeless. I've been trying to do it on my own. <laughs> but Lord, I'm here today in faith, believing that you're not done with me yet, believing that you have the power to save and restore and redeem my life. So I'm going to just simply, we're, we're just going to, we're going to sing a song. We're going we're gonna to worship together. We're going we're gonna to sing. But I, I want to invite you to come and respond. And we have these altars here available. And I want to just say you're welcome to come during this song. If you feel like you need to come, come. If, if it's for you, it's just saying, Jesus, I, I, I need to do this. It's, it's one thing to believe it in your heart. It's another thing to do it in action and say, Jesus, here I am. You might want to come. For some of you, you might be like, oh, I don't want to be too close to people. I, that's fine. Guess what? Each of you have a chair. Those of you who are on the live stream, you're sitting somewhere. Guess what? Turn that chair that you're sitting in into an altar for Jesus and come and lay it all down. And let's do it together, friends, okay? That chair, you have put so much faith in this morning that you sat in. You, you didn't even think about it. You just sat in it. You're thinking, oh, this is going to hold me up. Let's flip that around and let's put it, our faith on who we really should put our faith in. And let's get on our knees and let's just cry out to the Lord and just say, Jesus, I need you. Some of you are going through some illness or you're going through something that you just need prayer for. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be over in this corner. And if, if you want to come, I would love to pray for you and anoint you with oil. If you want to come believing for a miracle, just believing and giving it to God. I would love to pray for you. No matter how you come, just come. If you sit in your chair, just open your heart. Just allow the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't think about other people right now. This, this is not about who else is in the room. It's not about what people will think. It's not about us. It's about Jesus and what he's wanting to do and what he's wanting to say in your heart. Allow him. Allow him to do it. Let's respond. Come now as we worship. Lord, do what you're famous for. We want to see you do it again.
done and neither is Jesus.
see them out and move today. God, I believe in you. 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 God, I believe. God, I believe in you. Can we do that again? Can we sing that last part? Can we stand, church, as we pour out our worship to our Lord, our worship to our Savior, our worship to our God? Because he is moving mountains right now. He's moving mountains in the people who came to the altar. He's moving mountains in the places that you find yourself. He's moving mountains when Pastor Kevin was anointing healing. Church, he is moving mountains. So let's sing that again. And I, I, Can we get the words back on the, the screen? Because I'll be honest, I don't know the words. And let, let's continue this worship. Yeah. I've seen you move. You're moving mountains. And I believe. Do we believe, I've seen church? You do, it again. do we believe he's made a way? Where there was no way. And I believe. Do we believe? He'll do it again. We believe in you. God, we have seen mountains move in our lives, in our friends' lives, in random strangers' lives. Because we believe. And we fall at your feet. And we seek Jesus in everything that we do. Because we know at the end of the day, it's not about money. It's not about our jobs. It's not about the things that we do or the things that we collect. But God, it is all about you. So God, we believe and we pour ourselves out. And we find ourselves at your feet in a humble position saying, Jesus, I need you. I need you over and over again. Time and time again, we find ourselves in these places and the only thing to say, the only thing to do is to go to the feet of Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you. 
So we do that today. We come to your feet, Jesus, and we say, I need you. Lord, thank you for this service. Lord, I pray over the people who came to the altar. I pray to the people who made an altar at their chairs. I pray for the people who made an altar in their home today. Who in an act of humility and surrender said, I need Jesus and took action upon that thought. Lord, I pray for my brothers and my sisters that were here that just need your healing. Lord, we don't understand it sometimes. We don't get it. In our humanness, it seems wrong and hard and difficult. But we choose to trust in you, Lord. We choose to put our faith in you because that is what faith is. Lord, I am so thankful, so overwhelmed, so grateful that you have brought me into this place today. Lord, we want to make you famous. So not our will, but your will be done. Fill us this day so we can go out from this place. Allow us to be guided by you. We surrender in all that we do. In Jesus' name, we ask all of these things, Lord. Amen. Well, guess what, church? Jairus' daughter and the bleeding woman's life didn't end those days thousands of years ago. We get the opportunity to go from this place. They got the opportunity to go from where they were at. I'm so grateful for a God who didn't condemn, didn't allow that daughter to die, didn't allow the bleeding woman to continue to be subject to that bleeding. I don't know what the rest of their story entails. I don't know what the rest of our story entails or your story entails. But I do know we serve a big and great and powerful God that says your story doesn't end today. That this is just the beginning of a new chapter, of a new season, of a new life if you put your hope and your faith and your trust in God. Amen. So with that, we are dismissed from church, but we are not dismissed from keeping on loving our Lord and worshiping him. See you guys. Our